I am. Um, maybe to flesh that out a little bit, you've, I would say you've lived within the confines of a variety of stories. And so let, let's expound on that a little bit. Tell me your theory of story, and maybe you could reflect a little bit, if you would, on what different stories you've inhabited and what the consequences of that have been for you. Um, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me just start by saying a story is also the moment. And um, it's a moment when you're forced to make choices. So in my background, I obviously was raised with the story that gave meaning to my parents and my grandparents over generations. Um, but what was always clear was that you always had um, um, you always had God on your side. There was the story we were told was the story of this is God's purpose for you, for all of us. The answers were a given. Um, I became dissatisfied with that story, I think as most people here know, and I picked a different story when I was old enough, I thought, and capable enough to make a choice. And again, I think we find ourselves today, right now, in a moment where we have to make a choice and we have to make a moral choice. I sit here and I can say today, given what's going on, I support Israel. No buts, no ifs, unequivocally. <laughs> that is a moral choice. And it is based on the story of the civilization that I adopted. And the civilization that I adopted, Western civilization, is threatened with a story from the civilization that I left. And I think, for me, um, these are the two stories of my time. And there are times when I feel um, depressed and think, why on earth do I have to be you know, why do I have to deal with this? Uh, but there are times like now when I really feel strengthened and emboldened and say, I have children and I'm fighting for the civilization that I adopted for my children and for your children. And we have to fight. And it makes me extremely optimistic that this room today is full of people who see that and who want to fight back. That's what, what do you think in your own life, what do you think the differences are between the times when you're feeling more despair, let's say, and more hopelessness, and the times that you're feeling more optimistic? Um, the hopelessness for me comes when people make excuses for evil. When you have week, three weekends in a row, 100,000 people who live here and who've grown up here and who, who uh, enjoy the blessings of this civilization march in London and make excuses for evil and side with evil. It makes, it makes me despair because the rest of us don't stand up to it. But it also gives me hope to come here and say, let's stand up for it. Because now we know what evil looks like and we know exactly what we're facing. It's not only the Jewish babies that they're beheading. They will behead your babies, Jewish or not, if you don't fit into their story. Okay, one more, I have one more question for you on, on that side of things. Now, you, you grew up in one story, within the confines of one story, let's say, and you said when, that there was a time in your life where you, you chose another. And I would say, what do you think Why did you make the decision that you did make to value the latter story, the Western story that you identified with? Why did you make that decision? And how do you justify it? It was very easy to make the decision because it's a Western story and Western civilization is a story that cherishes life, that goes to great lengths to preserve life. The story I left was a story that cherishes death. My life as a woman meant nothing. I was a thing to be traded, to be used, and then to be discarded. 
And once I found out the differences, I adopted this story that is all about the preservation of life, not only for people in the West, but all human life. That's the story of the West. That's the story that's not told.